Okay, everyone, I'm coming to you live or semi-live from Breezewood, Pennsylvania at the Breezewood Supercharger. So it's time for some supercharge and chat. Uh, I'm actually at the first time for me uh, being at the sort of a partnership between Sheets and Tesla by having the Tesla superchargers at the Sheets gas station uh, and convenience store. For anyone who's not familiar with Sheets, they're a popular uh, gas station and convenience store brand. Uh, they partner with Tesla to supply uh, superchargers in the same location as gas stations and their convenience stores, obviously to drive business like anyone else who gets involved with the superchargers themselves. Uh, but I'm here for the first time. I've never been before, so this is very interesting to see the the dynamic or just the, the visual even of sort of the old way of cars and the new way and a new direction in which cars are are going so you have the uh, charging station and then you have the old gasoline having the old usher in the new so it's interesting to see sort of that that imagery uh, to see how the future is coming uh, and what the future holds so it'd be interesting to see also if a lot of these superchargers and gas station combinations uh, grow throughout the country uh, with other partnerships aside from sheets um, and see what that looks like and see if there's a need and there's a demand for it and soon maybe we can have a situation where gas stations are replaced with just superchargers so maybe instead of superchargers being off to the side here they are the main play and they're under here under the lights and they're people are coming and going to supercharging and maybe there's fast charging which charges in a matter of minutes versus you know close to an hour like it is now so while I'm here at the supercharger, I wanted to touch on a question from one of the comments on YouTube from Ray Bellinger. Hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, he asked about uh, the impact of the Model 3, specifically as in regards to supercharging. What impact the Model 3 and the population of, of, of uh, reservation holders, the 400,000 plus reservation holders, how that would impact supercharging? Uh, and my opinion is that it's going to drastically impact supercharging. And I guess it's all relative. Uh, based on you know where you're from, I know in California and the West Coast in general, supercharging is a problem. A very dense population of Tesla owners in California specifically, and so superchargers are always full. They have lines down the block or around the lot, wherever the supercharger is, uh, and it's an issue. Uh, over here on the East Coast, not so much. I've almost never been in the line. I've never had to wait for a supercharger except for those superchargers which are close to shopping centers and shopping malls and maybe it's thanksgiving or the day before christmas or something like that where everyone's trying to get their shopping in and superchargers are sort of jam-packed in, in that regard now with the introduction of idle fees uh i don't that, that's helped to mitigate the issue so people aren't uh you know just leaving their car in a supercharger and going but i think the impact of the model 3 is going to change that even more so because now you're going to have a larger influx of, of tesla owners coming to use the superchargers and whereby Model S and Model X owners typically, and I say, choose my words carefully when I say typically, uh, would have their Model S or X and can charge at home. I do know a contingent and a, and a large, actually a small contingent, which represents a large number, uh, in fact, that represent people who are, who have Model S's and Model X's, but live in apartment buildings or condos or places where they can't have home charging. So they rely on the supercharger network to stay full, making one or two trips a week to keep the, uh, the energy up and keep them going. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the owners that I've seen, the majority of the owners, have garages and have no problem charging at home. With the Model 3, we introduce a larger contingent of people uh, who are in that, that same scenario where they're living in apartments and condos and places where charging is not available to do at home, so they have to rely on supercharging. Uh, and so that's going to definitely create a problem across the country uh, for Model 3 owners charging. The smaller battery is also going to be a reason to charge more frequently, uh, whereas the larger batteries of the S and X can go a little bit further. Um, having the smaller batteries, at least, at least at launch for the for the base model, uh, and those who opt for the, the lower range versus the long, larger range are going to find themselves charging quite frequently. So there are going to be lots of people at the superchargers. Tesla has done a pretty decent job of at least mitigating that in, in, in theory. I haven't seen it in practice. I haven't seen an actual one by putting in urban superchargers, which are intended to be the place where city dwellers, people in urban environments with 
uh, apartments and condos and they have no home charging can go and charge uh, and that'll be their sort of gas station, so to speak, local gas station, uh, where they can go and fill up on a more frequent interval without the long distance uh, traffic of people traveling and using superchargers as they exist today. I know in, in California specifically, and I have some friends who are guilty of this, so I'm speaking really on, on, on their behalf, but I also noticed it in talking to some other owners uh, that people in California abuse the superchargers. They are around the corner, down the street, and they just leverage the, the free supercharging as opposed to paying for the electricity uh, of charging at home. I know people are guilty of that. Uh, I can see that increasing, but the fact that you don't have free supercharging is another way that tes for, for Model 3s, that is, you don't have free supercharging for Model 3s, is I think Tesla's way to mitigate that by saying, hey, you know what? We're going to let you guys have the Model 3. We're going to let you guys supercharge, but you're going to have to pay for it. And so now, since there's no su free supercharging, that should mitigate lots of people abusing uh, the supercharger, in addition to the fact that there'll be urban chargers for people who absolutely need to have more of a local uh, solution for charging versus superchargers as they are now, which are intended more for long distance use, but can also be misused for local charging. So for Model 3, the answer to the question is the impact is going to be big, but Tesla is going to try to mitigate that with the introduction of urban chargers uh, for more frequent and, uh, you know, more frequent use and for people who don't have uh, home charging. And they also have paper pay per use charging. Uh, overall for superchargers, which should also keep the numbers down, keep the volume down from people who are needing to charge their Model 3s. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about the other aspects of charging because there was a two part to that question. There was another question about uh, alternatives to home charging. I'm going to talk about that in another video uh, where I can actually show some examples of alternatives uh, when it comes to travel and how, and if you don't have access to a supercharger, what else can you do? Okay, so for right now, I'm just going to talk about the Model 3. I also think the Model 3 population is also going to introduce uh, a very interesting scenario as it, as it pertains to service. Tesla right now has phenomenal service. Let me, let me say that first and foremost. The best service that I've seen, I know some users have, some, some owners have different experiences, but from my experience, the, the customer service is second to none. Um, as far as being able to service your vehicle, whether they have loaners or not, you know, that's, that's another story. But being able to service your vehicle, giving you information and being able to take care of things uh, that go wrong with the car, I think Tesla is second to none in that regard. But what I foresee coming, and I think Tesla also sees it, which is why they started to implement a new service process, if you will, or service workflow, where a lot of their service centers have changed the way that they are bringing in cars, the way that they're dealing with cars. Uh, in anticipation of higher volumes in the Model 3. And that's really my concern, is having the Model 3 come out in mass and, and everybody is having issues, some people are having concerns, and they all go to the service center, and now your service center trips are, are a lot longer than they used to be. You can't just get in and out. Uh, you have to wait longer and longer because there's a long line of cars ahead of you, a lot of Model 3s ahead of you, etc. Uh, and I think Tesla sees that as well, and they're being proactive about it right now. From my perspective, I see that they've implemented a new workflow process for that. And in addition to that, they've also sort of new processes around how they how they handle customer service to the point where you can come in, drop your vehicle off, and be on your way. It's a very streamlined process. We've had to go to service uh, a couple of times uh, with uh, the Model X recently, and we were in and out very quickly. Um, they also have... Uh, are starting to roll out, at least in the West Coast, mobile service where they're, they'll go out, they'll come to you, service the vehicle right where you are, and then you'll never have to uh, step foot in the service center and you don't have to wait and worry about loaners. So I think that's another way to mitigate it. So I think for the most part, test any issues that are uh, revolving around the volume that the Model 3 is going to introduce, I think Tesla is aware of it and is putting into place uh, some actionable items to mitigate them, to honestly mitigate them. So we'll see what happens. Um, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, we'll talk again in the next video.